Hi, Stella. I need to talk to you. I've been thinking about the layout of the new house. My room being on the second floor won't work. I'm going to need a room on the first floor. Hi, Rosa. I'm getting old, Stella. My knees aren't what they used to be. You're not going to make me walk up and down stairs all day, are you? I have to say, I'm a little confused, Rosa. I thought Giovanni told you you won't be moving in with us. We're not building our new house with a room for you. Don't be so defiant, Stella. I've already talked to your husband. He agrees it's best for everyone if I'm there. Wait, what? Is that true? Giovanni is a wonderful son. I raised him right. Of course he said I could move in with you. But I never agreed to that. Don't be so cold-hearted. In my culture, it is the oldest son's responsibility to take care of his parents in their retirement years. You're only 55! Look, I just messaged you to tell you I'll be needing a room on the first floor. I want a self-facing window with a walk-in closet, okay? I... I've already given the contractor the blueprints. That's why I'm telling you now. The office next to the living room should be perfect. You'll just have to make the closet a little bigger. Rosa... I don't know what to say. You can just use the room upstairs as the office. Use your brain! I don't know what you're talking about. There's no room upstairs for you. Do you think marriage is a joke? You married my son. You have responsibilities as a wife and as a daughter-in-law. I understand that. It's just that I told Giovanni I don't think we should have you move into our house. I'm not comfortable with any of this. You need to talk to your husband. The decision is already made. Okay, Rosa. I'll talk to Giovanni. Have a nice day. Giovanni, what's going on? Your mother just messaged me about moving in with us. Why is she under the impression that we have a room for her? I told you I don't want to live with your mother. Hey, Stella. I know what we said. I told mom that you'd said you don't want her to move in. What? Did you have to be that blunt? He didn't have to throw me under the bus like that. It's the truth, right? Anyway, we talked about it for a while, and I decided that she should move in after all. What do you mean you decided? I said no! You can't just decide on your own! I'm the man of the house. I'll decide who lives in it. You need to be a good wife and cooperate. We need to do what's best for the family. I don't want to live with your mother. Remember when we first got married? She was horrible to me. She has a mean streak and she bullied me relentlessly. You're overreacting. My mom isn't a mean person. She wouldn't hurt a fly. You really believe that? You even saw some of it happen. There was that time she got me men's deodorant for my birthday. She's old. Maybe she thought it was for women. That's hardly the end of the world. Either way, who gives deodorant as a present? What's that supposed to mean? That I stink? She's just being helpful by getting you something you can use. Fine. How about when we ordered delivery when the family got together and she forgot my order? You're being too sensitive. She makes mistakes sometimes. She's human. Maybe once or twice. I'm talking about every time we order delivery. She always forgets my meal. And only my meal. You really think that is an accident? Can't you be kinder to your mother-in-law? She pesters me about not having kids every time I see her. She usually chooses the most public places to ask me about it, too. You are being so intolerant. That's just how her generation is. Can you really blame her for wanting grandkids? Look, this is all just because she loves me so much that she can't help herself. She wants the best for me, you know? It's rude. You know she's going to make life hell if she moves in with us. It's been five years. I'm sure things will be better. Besides, you don't complain about my mother as much these days. It takes time to build a relationship. We're getting along better because I put some distance between us. I had to move us a whole state away so that she couldn't just stop by on a whim to torture us. If I let her move in with us, it's going to be unbearable. She'll be there night and day to torment me every day. Maybe you need to make an effort to get her to like you. She is your mother-in-law. What? I was nothing but nice to her from the beginning. She's impossible. Don't talk about my mother like that, okay? She raised me. I owe everything to her. I know you love your mother. That's great. I just can't live with her. You're going to have to. 
I've already decided we are, and I told mom she could move in with us too. You can't make a decision like that on your own. It's my house too. But I'm the man of the house. You're my wife. You need to know your place. Excuse me? We all have responsibilities in life, Stella. You have a duty as a wife to respect me in my decisions. Honor your father and mother, Stella. It's the first commandment. I know, but... I'm not going to let my aging mother live on her own. I won't allow it. Giovanni, she's not old. She's only 55. She fought the security guard on Black Friday last year. She's not a frail old woman in any way. As the oldest son, I should be the one that takes care of her in retirement. The way she grew up. That's the way life is. I'm proud to be able to fulfill my duties as her son. It's the right thing to do. That's... I guess that's an admirable sentiment. I just don't think it has to be now. Maybe we could move in together when she needs physical assistance. She's still as active as I am. Or more, even. You want to wait until she gets hurt to let her move in with us? That is ice cold. She's moving in with us. End of discussion. You need to remember your place and obey your husband. You can't be serious. What century do you think you're living in? I'm not agreeing to this. This is a family matter. The head of the household has spoken. Shut up and go do something useful. Rosa, what do you think you're doing sending all this stuff to our house? What is all this anyway? You sent it all to us cash on delivery. These are big boxes. It was pretty expensive. It's my stuff, silly. Did you expect me to move in without my stuff? <laughs> I didn't expect you to move in at all. I told Giovanni several times I'm not comfortable with that. This is the problem with women in this country. You have no respect for the man you marry. Um, I don't think it's so much US culture. More like the advancement in human rights and common beliefs. So you're saying you want to do away with tradition? You're going to be damned to hell if you keep talking like that, Missy. A strong family is the most important thing one can have in life. A family is a team. Everybody has a role. I'm not saying all tradition is bad. I'm just saying times have changed and your values aren't the same as mine. I won't allow immorality to corrupt my family. You clearly need a re-education in virtues. Rosa, please try to be reasonable. What's unreasonable is your blatant disrespect for your husband. You're a bad wife, Stella. When I move in, I will be setting things right. You'd better be ready for a few changes. What? I said you're not moving in with us. You will do as you are told from now on. None of this uppity attitude. Do you understand? You will take your responsibilities seriously and fulfill your duties as a wife. I won't let you stray the way you have been doing. How have I been straying? You can't just declare rules. Who do you think you are? I'm your husband's mother. Have some respect. I'm also the senior member of the household. When I move in, I will be taking care of the finances in the house. I'll manage the bank books and budget everything. No, thank you. That won't be happening. You know what can't be happening is a wife running around with too much money. I heard from Giovanni about your arrangement. You each pay $1,000 for your bills and expenses and keep the rest of your paycheck as personal money. Yes, both our jobs provide a housing allowance so we can get by on $2,000 a month. We each deposit our half into our joint spending account and pay for our costs together. That is unacceptable. Absolutely incomprehensible. That's all you contribute to the family. $1,000. That's all we need to cover our expenses. Giovanni pays the same amount. Where are you hiding the rest of the money? That is family money, not yours. You need to deposit all of your income into a family account. You can have a monthly allowance for your needs. I'd say $100 would be plenty to cover whatever you need. $100? You expect me to get by on that? I don't understand how you can justify living like this. You're a married woman. Your home should be your first priority. We're doing just fine, thank you. You have no right making financial decisions for us. I've already discussed this with Giovanni. He's been too lenient with you. He's just too sweet for his own good. I'm going to make sure you become a proper wife and do my son right. I didn't raise him to be mistreated by a new age shrew. So you want me to deposit all of my income and live on a $100 allowance each month? You understand that's impossible, right? You just need to learn to budget. 
This is the problem with young folk just spending away without thinking about the future. Rosa, I work full time. I'm out all day and I spend money because I need to. I have to drive to work and gas costs money. I get a coffee on my way to work or a lunch at work and that costs money too. I have to make sure I look decent as well. I work in marketing with high-end clients. I have to update my wardrobe with suits that are appropriate for the workplace. I can't wear the same sweatpants every day like you. That works for eating cookies on the couch all day watching reality TV, but not if you're doing something with your life. Oh, now you're calling me lazy. I don't eat cookies in front of the TV all day. How dare you? You're living on $100 a month, and that's final. You can pack a lunch or take the bus if you need to save money. Be creative. You may be able to live on $100 a month, staying at home like a bear in a cave, but I won't be doing that. I have a career. I love my job. I deserve to go out with my friends for lunch if I want. I'll have you know, before Armando died, I was in charge of the books. He worked, I took care of the house and our three children. A wife and mother must dedicate herself completely to the home. Maybe you're working too much to see how you are neglecting your duties at home. I know you are a full-time mother and homemaker. I think that's wonderful. I happen to choose a different path for myself. Nowadays, many women have careers, Rosa. Women delaying marriage and having children is pretty common. Some women choose not to get married even. Blasphemy! For heaven's sakes, you don't think that's your purpose in life, do you? A childless woman busy all day at work? I won't let you take away my joy as a grandmother. Whether or not we have children and when is between Giovanni and I to discuss. Besides, I'm not taking away anything. Doesn't your daughter Maria have two kids? I knew it! You're not going to have children! Why did you even get married? I am not standing by to watch you destroy my Giovanni's life. Things are going to be changing once I move in. Mark my words. If you insist on moving in with us, you'll need to pitch in for rent and expenses from your pension. Are you okay with that? What? Don't be ridiculous. I'll do no such thing. Family is a team, right? You need to pitch in to do your part. And if you must, you can balance our books as well. I'll be checking it every month for any discrepancies, so I want it accurate down to the last cent. That's... I mean, I'm not an accountant or anything. And you'll budget a $100 allowance for yourself every month. That's not happening! I can't live on $100 a month! Oh, so you're expecting me to do something you know is impossible. It just goes to show how detached from reality you are. Please try to be reasonable. You can't talk to me like this! I'm your husband's mother. He should have asked me to move in with you. I'm talking to Giovanni about your insolent attitude and disrespect. The man of the house is going to put you in your place. Stella, what did you say to my mother? She was so distraught she could barely talk. She said you said stay-at-home mothers are lazy. My mother was amazing. She raised us three kids and took care of the house. I didn't say that. She's beyond reason, Giovanni. I can't live with her. You have to understand. This can't happen. What can't be happening is your disobedient attitude. The Bible says, wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands. You're joking. You're not going to start pressuring me with Bible verses, are you? I'm talking about how things are meant to be. The natural order of things. I'm the man, the leader of our household. You, as my wife, are in charge of the house. You should be dedicating yourself completely. We're paying for everything half and half. How can you say I'm not doing my part? You shouldn't be hiding your income from me. There shouldn't be any secrets between us. From now on, you will deposit all of your earnings in the family account. That includes bonuses or any other extra income. Got it? And you'll receive a $100 a month allowance. Really? All right, then let's do it your way. We'll all deposit our income in the family account. Your income, your mother's pension, and my income. We'll all live on $100 a month allowance. Huh? What are you talking about? You know, it's the right thing to do. We'll all pitch in. That seems fair to me. I'm a man, Stella. I'm not going to live on $100 a month, you dumb shrew. I'll be getting a $2,000 allowance. I can't be seen around town with empty pockets. Ugh. So you deserve 20 times as much as I do? You're lucky to be getting an allowance at all, Stella. You're risking me taking that away, too. Oh, and there's no way we're obligating Mom to pay anything. She raised me. 
It would be an insult to ask her for anything. You can't be serious. After all that talk about family members pitching in? She's talking about a wife's duty. You need to know your place and devote yourself to the household. Work. Do the housework. Be accommodating in general, like a good wife should. Learn to be seen and not heard. Have some respect for your husband and your mother-in-law. I don't know when you started being this way, Giovanni. You used to be different. I never would have built a house with you if I knew this was going to happen. Well, it's too late now. The house is being built as we speak. We're going to be living with my mother and that's that. I can't agree to this. My life is going to be miserable. Like I said, maybe you should try to get along with mom better. She just wants what's best for us. As soon as you accept your place in the family, you can get back on track being a righteous woman. Mom will help you. That's enough, you self-righteous mama's boy. I'm not moving into a house with you or that unbearable mother of yours. What? You can't back out now. The house is almost done. We're getting ready to move. My mom started sending her stuff over already. I'll cancel the contract. I'll move out of the apartment we live in within the week. What? Slow down. Don't get hysterical on me. You're not moving out. Just calm down. You can't just order me to do what you want. It's the 21st century. Women have equal rights to men. Fine. Get out. I don't need a woman like you in my life anyway. You can get out. I'll just live in the new house with my mother. I don't think that will be happening either. I guess you think you can just kick out your wife from the house you're building together? Hey, you're the one that said you wanted to leave. So leave. I'll be taking the house, though. You won't be able to live in the house. I'll be canceling the contract. Oh, shut up with that crap. You're not canceling anything. The house is basically done. Actually, it's not. I guess you don't know because I'm the one who's been dealing with the contractors. What do you mean it's not? There's been huge delays in the construction. We couldn't get our hands on some materials because manufacturing shut down or there were transportation issues. The contractors had trouble finding skilled workers like carpenters and electricians too. You know how things are now. I guess, but it's almost done, right? I mean, we were supposed to move in this weekend. The house is nowhere close to livable at this point. Why do you think we haven't even started packing yet? Hello? What? But I've driven by the house. It's looking good. They just did the walls and the roof. Nothing is done inside yet. It's basically a box. None of the interior construction has started yet. But, so what's going to happen? I'll cancel the contract and call up the real estate agent. We'll just put the land back on the market. You think it's going to be that easy? You have no idea how the real world works. The market fluctuates. Things are way more complicated than that. My cousin helped me find the property we got for a really good deal, and she didn't even take a commission. She'll help me take care of the house. Don't worry. You can't do this. This is our dream house. We designed it together. Yes, I imagined a future with you in this house. This isn't a dream house, though. It's a nightmare house. I didn't mind some traditional values in our marriage. I don't mind cooking or dressing modestly. I'm not asking you for anything special. This is a marriage. No, it's not. I'm not your servant or maid. I'm not going to put myself in that situation. I'm leaving you. I'll sign the divorce papers and send them to you. Wait, Stella, calm down. At least don't cancel on the house. We can talk about this. I need to go make some arrangements. I'll talk to you later once I get the divorce papers. Wait. What do you think you're doing, you stupid cow? I heard you canceled the contract on the house. You've got a lot of nerve, don't you? Oh, hello, Rosa. It sounds like you know what I'm doing. I'm canceling the contract for the house. I'm going to divorce Giovanni. We won't be needing the house anymore. In my day, a wife never even dared to ask for a divorce. We married a man for life. I guess you wouldn't know anything about standing by your man. Times are different, Rosa. I don't have to stay in a bad relationship. I deserve better. Giovanni is a wonderful husband. You're the one who's causing all these problems. Regardless of who you may feel is to blame for it, we're getting a divorce and I'm canceling the contract for the new house. This is unacceptable. I am your mother-in-law. What is this I hear about the house not even being ready to move into? There have been delays due to various circumstances. It's been impossible to stick to the schedule. You're just incompetent, Stella. You shouldn't have been dealing with the contractor to begin with. You have no right to cancel anything. 
Giovanni is the man of the house. He is the only one that can cancel anything. We'll just explain to the contractor that a spiteful wife cancelled behind his back and everything will be straightened out. Rosa, I told you I cancelled the contract already. It's done. Everything is in your husband's name, Stella. This is the problem with women sticking their noses where they don't belong. You're wasting your time attacking Giovanni like this. If you're walking away from your marriage, you're walking away from the house. Um, the contract is in my name. The loan, land titles, everything. What? How is that possible? Giovanni is the man of the house. He is the breadwinner. His name should be on everything. Why would anything be in your name? Because I'm the breadwinner of the house, Rosa. I make a lot more than Giovanni. What? How is that even possible? I... I got an education and worked hard at my job? I just do. I make about five times more than your son right now. That's just... It's unbelievable. No, that can't be right. Giovanni has a good job at that fancy car dealership. He's making good money. I thought so too. It turns out he lost that job. I only found out when we went to apply for the house loan. We tried getting a loan under his name, but he couldn't qualify. I mean, we were applying for a higher-end district, but still. I thought it was strange, so I asked him about it, and it turns out that he was fired almost six months ago. What? Why didn't he tell me? What happened? Rosa, are you aware of Giovanni's gambling problem? I thought he was keeping it under control this time, but he's been struggling. Gambling? Not my Giovanni. He knows that Satan's game. He had a problem before we got married, but he quit. I was sure he'd gotten over it. I paid off his bookies. He stopped going to sports bars. He swore he was a changed man. His bookies? I... I can't believe it. He'd been clean for four years, but he somehow got hooked on online gambling. Online gambling? They have websites and apps now where you can bet on sports and play casino games and stuff. That's horrible. He lost his job because he got caught multiple times sitting in a car on his phone for hours. But I'm so confused. So he was doing day labor to make the thousand dollar a month deposit so I wouldn't notice. But he's been broke for months. This can't be happening. Giovanni is a good boy. I've stood by him as his wife. I've helped him pay off debts, urged him to go to counseling. I think I've done the best I can. But he started changing since we started building the house. He started quoting Bible verses at me and telling me I need to know my place as a woman. He's just being a man, Stella. I don't see what the problem is. I know you're reinforcing these ideas of patriarchy and Giovanni. He seems to get worse every time he talks to you. I was just instilling traditional values from my culture. You can understand, can't you? I'm your mother-in-law. You won't be my mother-in-law anymore since I'm divorcing your son. You can stop forcing your values on me. Okay, fine. We can agree to disagree. I didn't know about all this other stuff you guys have going on. You were being a supportive wife. I just didn't know it. Okay, thank you. I think I'm a good wife too. So why don't we all try to work it out? We can talk about arrangements. You don't need to get a divorce. Oh no, I'm definitely getting a divorce. Please don't start pretending to be nice to me. It's unnecessary. Stella, please rethink this. Don't be rash. I'm willing to compromise. How about I live in the room upstairs? You can have the office. There's no house, Rosa. Look, I'm really busy. I have to get the paperwork done for my divorce. I have to make moving arrangements. I don't really have time to message you right now. Stella, just sleep on it a few days. Don't act on your emotions like this. I've tolerated enough from both of you. I won't be belittled and used in the name of the family anymore. I'm packing my things and moving out within the week. I have a ton of things to do. I have to pack too. Let's talk about this, Stella. Please. That reminds me, you need to move the boxes you sent over to the unfinished house. It's going to get in the way when we tear down the house. Please get that done as soon as possible. What? Stella. I'm sorry, Rosa. I've got to go. Goodbye. Please, Stella, don't divorce me. We're family. We can get through this. I've been through enough, Giovanni. There's nothing you can say to convince me. We've been through so much together. We're building a new house. It's a new house to a new start. We'll start fresh. Everything's going to be great. You just have to give it a try. 
I promise things are going to be different. Oh? Yeah, mom can pitch in around the house and help with cleaning and cooking. I mean, you work full time. And you don't have to deposit all of your income. It's fine. You can decide what to spend your money on. You understand that women are equal to men? You're not going to talk down to women anymore? I won't, I promise. I respect you. You're an independent woman. I won't talk to you like that anymore, I swear. Oh, I wasn't talking about me. You shouldn't talk down to any woman. We all deserve respect, Giovanni. And yes, I am independent and I will be leaving you. I don't need you in my life. What? You tricked me into begging you? You manipulative witch. You're never going to change, Giovanni. I hope you're very happy living with your like-minded mother. We'll be just fine. We're better off without you. Great! I'll be sending you some paperwork in the mail. Please get things done in a timely manner. You witch. You're going to regret this. Goodbye, Giovanni. Wait! Stella! It took a while for Giovanni to agree to sign the papers, but it finally got done and I was officially divorced. Giovanni and his mother moved into a cheap apartment together, but they still didn't have enough to live on every month. Rosa was surprised at how little her son is making, and began looking for work as well, but with no work experience on her resume, she struggled to find a job. She managed to find a job as a cleaning lady in an office building, and is busy sweeping, mopping, and cleaning toilets every day. Apparently, in their tradition, the husband is above the wife, but the mother is all-powerful. Now that they live together and Rosa doesn't have me to bully, she has taken charge of Giovanni's life to get it back on the righteous path. He has a curfew and is forced to forfeit all his income. At least he won't be able to gamble away what little money he's getting. On my end, I made out excellent. I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. My cousin arranged for the house to be torn down immediately, and I sold the land right away. I'm glad we had purchased in a high-end district with land prices rising, because I ended up selling it for way more than I had paid for, not only covering the building and demolition costs, but making a little pocket money. I've already moved to a different neighborhood and started my new life. I'm moving on with my life. I feel free now. I can go wherever I want and do whatever I want.